Hey guys, so quick update on what happened. Essentially, Yuya got Kotaku'd. Now, you know and I know that once a Magic player, like on Sleeve Media, or The Quarterling, Jeremy, or Owen, gets an article written about them in Kotaku, which clearly references either harassment or cheating, your pro career is donezo. Uh, that is what is currently happening to Owen and what will likely happen to Yuya. So I'm making this video a little bit uh, in advance because I wanted to get my raw emotions. For a very long time, there's been a dude called Saito and he is a known cheater. He has been disqualified. Outside of that disqualification, he has been trying to get in the pro tour or the hall of fame for a very long time now. And he has the resume, he has the wins, but he also, the only thing preventing him from being voted to the Hall of Fame is he got caught cheating. Um, the reason that I am so anti-Saito uh, comes down to the fact that he never apologized for it, he never admitted it. Just like Alex, these apologies that they post on Facebook, they delete them a week later after they get banned for life, it's gone. There's no reflection. There's no, hmm, I did something bad. There's just this psychopathic attitude that you're better, that he's better than you. Uh, Efro has the same attitude. He gets people banned at Friday Night Magic who don't agree with him. I'll, and he expects people to concede to him because, quote, it would benefit them. Like, I mean, it sounds like a bribe, right? It sounds like a bribe. But it sounds like, actually, it doesn't sound like a bribe. It sounds like he's going to beat you up if you don't concede to him. And that's exactly how it, it plays out. And yet, these people get promoted time and time again. Time and time again, they get money. They get Where does this money come from, guys? It comes from me. It comes from you. The best thing for Magic the Gathering is to become an eSport. eSports is the solution to all of these problems, all of these headaches. Pew PewDiePie is one of them, yes, but it's more... PewDiePie wouldn't play, play Magic Online, right? That would, no one would want to play that. But he would play MTG Arena. The solution is to actually behave like a real business. Don't play favorites. Magic the Gathering has for many, many years played favorites, and they still do. Uh, when I mean by favorites, I mean, hey, we like you. What do you want? You want coverage? You want to do coverage even? You want to be on Tolarian Community College's uh, YouTube channel every week? Yeah, go ahead. It doesn't matter that people don't want you there. We'll put you there. <laughs> They play favorites, and eventually people will realize this, and they will look at Yuya and Owen from 2016 Hall of Fame. Who voted them into the Hall of Fame? They should be ashamed of themselves. Ashamed. They should have their right to vote for the Hall of Fame taken away, because clearly they couldn't identify that Yuya was a cheater. Now, the argument that you would make is not a compelling argument. You could say... Before he 2016, Yuya did not cheat at all. Only when he made the Hall of Fame, and only when he got paid $75,000, only when he was winning hundreds of thousands with the potential to win millions, did he start cheating. My argument for, to you is no. Blanket no. He cheated to get to the Hall of Fame, and he cheated to get the $1 million. It's so obvious what happened here. Um, it could not be more clear in my opinion because I see this at my local f and my local f and all the time. It's these same blanking people who win every pre-release, who win every draft, and they have 10 nickel bolises, five regular ones and five foils. And it's like, no, dude, that can't be right. You cannot have 10 bolises in a 40-card deck. There's been times in the past where I have absolutely killed my pre-release like it, like I got the cards that I wanted to play 
uh, like the core set, one of the core sets, I had one of the best decks I've ever had in my life. I was still the eight seed. Because no matter how great that deck was, it was still two colors. I would still get mana screwed once in a while. I would still not draw the right cards I needed at the right time. And on my opponent's side, sometimes they just wail on me because they just grab the best cards they can in the deck and I can't have answers for it. They, they played a bomb and when I don't have removal. But one thing I can tell you is the same person should not be winning every single pre-release. I went to five pre-releases. The same group of people went to four of them. The same dude won every pre-release. And then he split his packs with his friends. Come on. What is the probability of that happening? The only chance I could have knocked him out was that night. He had Garouk Apex Predator. He had Nightmare, like a foil Nightmare. And Nightmare is actually a very good card in, in Limited because it gets bigger. Like, you don't... It's very, very good. Trust me, as Evasion, it doesn't look good in Standard. It doesn't look good in any other format. But when it's got Evasion, it's a bomb. And I have difficulty dealing with Nightmare. I'm like, oh, good, Nightmare's gone. Oh, next turn, Apex Predator. Garuga. It's like, what? I think there was like some other random really good mythic that he had a foil of and a regular version of. It's... Uh, I don't know. I don't know. But anyway, this is the Death Neil. This is the goodbye, Yuya. When Kotaku writes an article about you and they throw in mythic championship and quote, an investigation is happening. There's not much else that can, there's not much that can save this guy. We will see. I'm making this prediction uh, a week in advance. So this is coming up May 6th. So I'm making this on Monday, April 29th. And I, I like to make predictions like this. And I like to have the videos in advance. And, you know, I know because the upload date, you might not know. But I would be shocked that he can recover I would not be surprised if they took away his Mythic Invitation. I would not be surprised if he, they kicked him out of the Hall of Fame, which has never happened. Because if you make the Hall of Fame, you get lots of benefits, but you're a Hall of Famer. And that's how you're introduced. I don't know very many professional athletes who have made the Hall of Fame and have been kicked out of it. There's been athletes who have not made, like Pete Rose, who were not let into the Hall of Fame, although their numbers suggest they should be or Barry Bonds because of drug usage. But there's never been, like, I, I, I would love sports. The Basketball Hall of Fame, Baseball Hall of Fame, Football Hall of Fame. I don't recall ever having someone voted into the Hall of Fame and then they took it away. And that would have to be a very extreme example. I, I, I don't really recall. Because the whole point of the Hall of Fame is You've done so much for the game. You represent the best parts of our game. You're untouchable. That's the entire point. You're untouchable. We will see if he does get his Hall of Fame revoked. I think he should. I think he should be banned for life. But I do know that when you have a Kotaku article written about you uh, on Sleeve Media or The Quarterling or Owen, Owen actually had two in very, very short sequence. So he's probably, whether or not you agree with me on Owen, very few people survive a Kotaku article like that. Uh, very few people. Or, and he started deleting his social media. So that's, I mean, it's bad. Who knows, Kotaku might have another article about him soon. It's not good because people who are interested in MTG Arena, they're going to associate this guy who was uh, two times pro of the year, magic player of the year, like one of the most famous Japanese, and they're going to think that everyone cheats. And because they think that, they're going to cheat themselves. And we're never going to get out of the cycle where you're facing a dude with five nickel bullets as regular, five nickel bullets as foil. And we ask him, hmm, that doesn't seem possible. He's like, are you calling me a cheater? You calling me a cheater? Just like the old Saito trick. Why do you have my deck in your hand? Well, you shuffled it and you gave me your deck to cut and I cut your deck. And he'd be like, no, there's no card here that said I shuffled a deck. 
are you talking about? I played my fetch land ne last turn. I didn't play the fetch land this turn. And then the judge would look at Saito's board, confirm that there's no card that would allow Saito to shuffle his deck. And then they'll look at you, and you will become the villain, although you've just fallen for the oldest trick in Japanese Magic the Gathering history. Cheating history. You become another victim. And at this point, you're probably so confused what happened that you might be like, oh yeah, Saito's right, I did cheat. I was holding his, I shouldn't have cut his deck, is what you're thinking. But in reality, he presented a deck for you to cut. So he's the one who initiated the cheating. You got confused, you manipulated his deck, yes you did. And that's the rules in the book that says you cannot manipulate your opponent's deck. What the rules do not say is that your opponent cannot shuffle his cards whenever he feels like it and hand it to you to cut it. And then you go to cut it, you try to hand it back, he calls a judge, and you're donezo. The reason I have been trying to go after this particular Magic player for a long time is I think that is by far the worst cheat. Because you know, cheating an opponent and winning without your opponent knowing that you cheated them, that's very low. But cheating an opponent by accusing them of being a cheater... There's no lower cheat than that, right? Imagine you're top eighting and you meet Saito and he's your hero and you love him and then he does that to you. Maybe in a moment, which is all he cares about, in a moment you don't realize what has happened because there's so much confusion. Maybe you're like, oh, so maybe I did take Saito's deck without him handing it to me or maybe, um, maybe I made a mistake. And then you get home a day later, and you realize exactly what happened, but it's too late. He's already won that event. And you say, oh, well, I'm not going to play Magic again. That's the worst. Uh, that's the worst cheat I've ever seen in my life. When I heard about it, it takes a mad genius, someone who's very well-versed in cheating, to come up with something that devious. Because not only do you win every game that you want to, no opponent would ever mess with you again because you could even you could ruin their reputation and you just did because they dared to compete against you they dared to not concede to you arigato yeah arigato